One thing that's good about being in person is listening out on your phone calls with clients. And I overheard you saying that you're worried about the world. What do you mean by that? Well, yeah, listen, we've had an amazing run in asset prices, right? You look at Tesla became a trillion dollar stock. Yesterday, Apple touched three trillion and had a pretty big reversal. You know, three trillion dollar stock on like 38 times earnings. And so nothing's cheap. And part of that valuation story has been we had a Fed printing money nonstop. Powell gets reconfirmed, decides he has to act like a central banker. We've had just completely wrong Fed policy, right? They should have tapered a long time ago. They should have raised rates a long time ago. And now we're going to get to that. So we'll learn more tomorrow. But end of the year, people are starting to, to sell things. And everyone I talk to feels nervous right now. And so if you look at the Apple chart, broke down yesterday, it looks like it easily go another 7 8%. Tesla chart looks like it's broken. NVIDIA, these are the three things that were really holding up the market. Those things are breaking down. And we already saw it in crypto. Crypto's come off a lot from the highs. Uh, it trades heavy. Uh, it doesn't worry me medium term because everywhere I go, I see people getting ready to invest in the space. Uh, and so, but just in the short term, I think we could have a messy equity market for the for the rest of the year and maybe even to the first first part of the first quarter uh, and crypto I think it goes sideways to down when you say down then what's the floor to crypto and the entry point for you Listen, I think Bitcoin 42,000 is at a pretty important level that should like low 40 should hold uh, we started the year at 30 and so there's been so much of a change in mindset in this space I was in the Middle East and two of the biggest pools of capital are starting to get into Bitcoin mining. Uh, we just raised a you know, $500 million convert. You saw New York Dig just raised a big uh, a round. There's been over $30 billion that's gone into venture. And so, so much money is pouring into the space. It would make no sense that the crypto prices would go much below that. Um, we went from not being an institutional asset class to being an institutional asset class. And so, but I do think there was a lot of froth, right? NFTs went wild. And while I fundamentally believe in the NFT uh, architecture and that lots of these NFTs are going to retain value. There's lots that won't. Uh, and so end of the year, people have to pay tax. Uh, a lot of crypto guys are buying real estate. There's a shocking amount of new homeowners that are financing their homes through crypto profits. And so you're seeing some indigestion. Um, it's probably healthy. If you're long, it feels painful, uh, but it's probably healthy. Uh, and I think we'll set up next year for a really exciting, you know, kind of future development as these businesses really build out. You know, I've been having a lot of discussions, Mike, about whether or not crypto, Bitcoin specifically, can be used as an inflation hedge. Clearly, um, in the past, in African and South American countries, um, you know, investors with currencies that weren't reliable have done that. But here in the U.S., we haven't seen it acting like an inflation, or there in the U.S., we haven't seen it acting like an inflation hedge over the past few weeks and months. What are your views? Listen, you know, it's both a risk asset and it's something where, something where people are adding to their portfolios uh, to hedge against the debasement of fiat currency. And if you look at a place like Turkey, where you had really crappy stewardship of the economy. You had from, from the top down, uh, you've now seen their currency depreciate by over 75% in three years. And so in places where the stewardship really gets bad, uh, it's an essential, right? You can buy real estate, you can buy gold. Bitcoin is this version of, this generation's version of digital gold. And it really does work to preserve value. Um, in a place like the US, we pray every night that the stewardship isn't as bad as Turkey's. Uh, listen, I, like I said earlier, I think Powell made some really bad decisions in his desire to get reappointed or just his misread of the economy. Uh, and now he's got a really tough position to be in. You've got a Democratic uh, president, Democratic Congress that wants to expand spending. Uh, they feel like they have a social mandate to do so. Uh, and you've got a booming economy with you know, nominal GDP over double digits. And so the Fed's supposed to be taking the punch away from the punch bowl. And so that won't be good for Bitcoin. That said, there's an right. adoption cycle coming. And so while I think Bitcoin could go sideways, down a little bit, and then up, there's an adoption cycle coming. Then you throw yeah, the, I was wondering the magic, how that, you know. Uh, Mike, I was wondering, how, you know, if you look at, for example, the Fed balance sheet, it goes in 2020 from $4 trillion now to well over $8 trillion and climbing. Um, and of course, we spent 
not just Democrats, but Republicans as well, trillions and trillions of dollars throughout this pandemic to prop up the economy. As that unwinds, is that bad for Bitcoin? Yeah, listen, as, as the, that unwinds, it could be bad for all assets, depending on the pace it unwinds and if it unwinds, um, right? Like, it's really hard to put the genie back in the bottle. Let's go back. Donald Trump raised spending $900 billion a year, uh, the single largest increase in government spending in history when we had the greatest economy of all time. And so the idea of fiscal responsibility went right out the window. Then COVID happened and we exploded spending. And now what's the new natural state? We don't know. Uh, will politicians find it in their, their DNA to be fiscally responsible? Hard to see. Does the central bank have an option not to finance giant deficit politicians? The populism, populism of America wants this spending. And so why people like Michael Saylor you know, are religious around this is they're looking and they're saying, this is a puzzle that can't get solved. And I think there is enough people that believe that and it's gonna take a lot of data for people to be changed, the mind to be changed. Mike, you know, this was really a novel year, going back to crypto, uh, for NFTs, for DAOs, different structures of how people engage with this community. Where does that go into next year? And is there real institutional interest in some of these new ways of doing business? Shocking. I mean, I was just on the phone with another CEO. It's, it's shocking how many CEOs of, of non-crypto businesses call and say, hey, how does this work for me? Um, the NFTs were the most important thing that happened this year in all of crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you name it. And it was because it was the first time people said, wow, real world companies are gonna participate on blockchains. Like it was not the crypto sandbox. When we started with DeFi, it was crypto tr trading against crypto and showing these new ecosystems that you could lend and you could have exchanges and you could have insurance and derivatives, but it was all crypto to crypto. With NFTs, it was the NBA saying, hmm, here's a $100, billion, $100 million a year revenue increase that we didn't even know existed. Uh, it's Visa who's saying, we're gonna have a lot more swipes of Visa per day because people are gonna be buying digital goods in the metaverse. Mm -hmm. It's video gaming, which is a monstrous industry, saying, hey, we're gonna have uh, interchangeable parts in our games built on a blockchain. And so NFTs kicked off this idea that crypto Web3 is really the next internet, the next iteration of the internet, and no investor wants to miss that. So let's talk about this space as well, right? Just spitting distance from Goldman Sachs. I'm wondering, I remember when I was going to your family office and that's where uh, much of this business was being built out of, you wanted to build the next big investment bank in crypto. So what does this signal about the future of finance? Is this in with the old, uh, out with the old and in with the new? Yeah. Well, it's Pretty quick walk over from Goldman, and they have a lot of talented employees. Uh, listen, we we love love being on the water. I love New York City. Uh, I wanted to be able to walk to work, uh, and we got a good deal here, and we love the space. Uh, it's hard to find new space in New York right now, and so this was pre-built out, and we're going to kit it to ourselves. And so um, I was worried it was a little too Wall Streety down here, but I tell you what, being on the water kind of compensates for it. And, um, but listen, I, we made a commitment to New York. We're also having offices in Palo Alto, and we're gonna open one in Miami and Austin. Uh, employees wanna be in other places. Some people wanna be in places with cheaper taxes. Uh, well, speaking of employees, you've hired more than 200 people already this year. What are your plans for next year? Can you continue at that pace? And what kind of culture do you need to build to win that talent war? Yeah, listen, crypto is purpose-driven. Like people come into here because they want to change the world. And it, and it sounds corny, but at its core, this is a, a revolution, right? It's a revolution of can we rebuild financial infrastructure in something that's more transparent, more egalitarian, more fair. It's generational. It's Gen Z's and millennials looking up at the generation that's been in charge for the last 30 years and saying, you guys screwed it up, right? From every metric, we went from 40% of debt to GDP to 130% of debt to GDP. Uh, we went from a uh, an, an environment that felt okay to now global warming and feels like the, you know, the, the planet's in jeopardy. We went from a population that was relatively healthy to the average man and woman has gained over 30 pounds in the years that the baby boomers have been in charge. And so Gen Z and millennials don't want to deal with 
uh, the old system. Is, is New York the place that that happens anymore, especially given Miami creating such big competition, especially in crypto? I think it's going to. Listen, every I've got three young kids. They love living in New York. They don't they don't live here, but they're not. They're visiting. Uh, I have four young kids. I'm going to get yelled at. But but <laughs> but three in their twenties. Uh, the city's booming right now, and what we find is all our young people want to be in the office, right? And so. This city has been the mentorship city. It's been the capital creation city. Uh, it's been the human capital magnet. Uh, listen, it's not that Miami and Austin aren't, aren't putting up a, a fight, but I don't think anyone's going to beat New York. And we've got a new Are mayor paying any that uh, is crypto friendly. Yeah, and speaking of, of, of him, are you paying any of your employees? I mean, he has, has made a big push. Um, for for d digital currencies, are you paying any of your employees like that? Do people get Bitcoin bonuses? You know, we haven't yet. We've looked into it. You know, there's there's lots of operational uh, stuff that's easy to fix, but it's uh, we're certainly going to look into it. Uh, most of our employees, I would think, all of them own crypto. Uh, I would hope all of them own at least one NFT. Uh, you know, you can't be in this industry and not care about it. It, 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 it doesn't resonate. And so uh, we're hiring uh, people that I used to kid around about wearing a suit one day and a hoodie the next, right? You've got to have the edginess of a revolutionary to be in crypto, but we're also servicing, you know, institutional accounts. And so our job is to kind of take them on this journey to teach them what we've learned. You made this comment a little earlier about crypto uh, investors, newer young investors that are getting very wealthy and buying real estate. Uh, are you seeing many people lever up or are you worried at all about some of the excesses that you may be seeing in the industry? Listen, whenever you have a year like this year where, you know, Ethereum is up from what well, we were at a thousand at the beginning of the year and now it's 3,700. And so people make lots of money and there's always some excesses. You can see it in the parties in Miami with all the great DJs. Uh, those are short-term signs that things are a little frothy and you have corrections, which we're having right now. Um, it's healthy. I tell every young crypto guy that's made a lot of money, sell some and buy, re buy some real estate. Like no one should have all their eggs in one basket. Uh, and so I think you're seeing, like I said, some indigestion of people recycling some crypto profits to buy real estate to pay their taxes. Uh, and I think that's healthy, quite frankly. Most exciting investments that you have lately that are not as valued, as richly valued as some of the tokens you've already spoken about. Um, listen, I think DeFi, right, the decentralized finance space, uh, got unloved this year. Right. If you look at the total amount locked into DeFi, it went from six billion to like 250 billion, or even more than that. Um, and you had a DeFi January that was exciting, and then the prices came down, and then people kind of forgot it uh, because the NFT thing was so exciting, because level ones were so exciting. And so I think next year could be the year of DeFi. These are real protocols that are starting to become battle tested, that are going to f really disrupt traditional finance. What's been holding it back is institutions haven't been using it because of KYC issues. You really want to be careful that you know who's on the other side of the transaction. I think that gets solved in 2022. It gets solved technologically. Uh, I think it gets solved with the regulators. In the moment that happens, you're going to see an explosion in DeFi. And so that's my kind of pick for the audience uh, to start buying a DeFi index or looking at the different DeFi protocols.